Okay, so for this question, you've got um, two dielectric regions, um, and they are separated by uh, this region, this boundary right here at rho equals four centimeters. They're separated. So um, because they don't say anything for phi and z, you can assume that this is true for all phi and z. So you can imagine, well, R1 is an infinite cylinder. Um, that goes all the way up and down the z-axis, and R2 is um, some dielectric that covers everywhere outside of it. Okay, so they give you the relative permittivities, 3.5 and 1.5 for region 1 and region 2, and they give you the electric flux density of the second region. So let's start with the first part, as most people do. Um, so I don't know what I just did right there. Okay. Okay, so um, a couple of things that you're going to want to note um, that will make uh, the rest of this question a lot easier is um, when you're doing these boundary condition problems, you want to list a couple of things. Um, the first one I like to do is I want to identify what direction is normal to this region boundary. So this region boundary is, is just the surface of the cylinder, right? The side surface of the cylinder. And what unit vector is normal to that? What cuts right through it? That would be anything in the A row direction. And the tangential component will be anything in the other two directions, which is A phi and A z in cylindrical coordinates. OK, so that's the first thing. Another important fact to know is that electric field can be converted, basically, into electric flux density using this and epsilon, the total permittivity, is the product of the free space permittivity times the relative permittivity, which we have for both regions. Um, another important fact, the tangential component of both regions' electric fields will be equal. And um, there is this relationship. And for most problems I've seen, like in most cases, I've seen, unless they explicitly say rho s is e not equal to zero, you if they don't mention rho s, I find that you can just assume it to be zero. And then this relationship is what you get out of it. So now that we have this uh, sort of groundwork laid, it's going to make the rest of the question a lot smoother, hopefully. So I'm going to start solving it in blue here. So we can quickly refer to this uh, this white text here. Um, so what I'm going to do is it asks us for part A to find E1 and D1, but I'm going to try and find D1 first, okay? So D1N should be equal to D2N by this relationship. And the normal part is should be in the row direction. So that would be this guy here. So D1N should be equal to 12 A rho. Oh yeah, this is all in nanocoulombs per meter squared so far, but I'll, I'll just I'll leave that alone for now. Okay, I'm just going to silently imply that uh, I'll talk about flux density in nanocoulombs per meter squared. I'll worry about it in the final answer. Um, on the midterm, I'd recommend <laughs> you write units um, everywhere. And don't forget your vectors. So um, that's that part. And to find the tangential component, oh yeah, really important thing. I conveniently forgot to tell you. Um, this is the same relationship for electric field and for flux density, but uh, the total electric field can be expressed as the sum of its tangential and normal components. So basically, if I find the tangential component and if I find the normal component of an electric field or a flux density, I can add them together and I'll have the total full expression of that quantity that vector. So now I've found the normal component of D1. So I'm going to try and find the tangential component so I can find the total expression, which is what the question is asking for. So continuing on in blue, um, I'm going to use the relationship uh, E1T is equal to E2 
t. And then I'm going to rewrite it in terms of d and epsilon. So I'm going to instead write d1t is equal to epsilon naught, epsilon r1. I'm going to plug in for what we know to be 3.5 is equal to d2t over epsilon naught times what we are given to know is 1.5, the permittivity for that region. And then you'll get an expression isolating for d1t. Uh, you will get 3.5 over 1.5 times d2t. The epsilon knots here will cancel. Okay. And for d2t, you need to plug in what we said was the tangential components of this. So that's going to then equal 3.5 over 1.5 times the tangential components, which is the phi and the z components, which is negative 6a phi uh, plus 9az. Again, uh, just forgetting about the units for now. And once you work that out, you'll find that d1t is equal to negative 14a phi plus 21az. And because the total flux density d1 is equal to the normal plus the tangential component. I can say that d1 in its entirety is equal to 12 a rho minus 14 a phi plus 21 a z nanocoulombs per meter squared. And to get e1 out of this um, from this relationship, uh, if I just, let's see, I always get this mixed up. If I just divide this by epsilon, I'll get E. So I can say E1 is equal to D1 over epsilon naught. And be careful to make sure you put ER1 here because we're still talking about region 1. And once you plug this in, you will get 388 A rho minus 452a phi plus 679az volts per meter. Okay, so that is how you handle the first part of this qu equation, uh, <laughs> question, sorry. So it was really helpful to identify the normal and tangential components um, in this particular region boundary. That helped us really easily uh, find what we're looking for. And these relationships, rel these relationships were all really important to finding our answers here. All right, so now for B, we want to find the polarization vector in region two and the bound polarization charge density in the second region. All right, so we, 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 we want to find. <laughs> All right, so for the second question, we want to find the polarization vector in the second region and the bound volume charge density in the second region. Okay, so you typically won't be able to find this without finding this first. So let's go find this. So um, you can write the polarization vector of the second region as P2 is equal to chi2 times epsilon naught times electric field in region 2. Now chi2, um, there is this handy relationship here. There is this relationship that is true. And um, since we're talking about chi 2, I'll put a 2 here. And if we're talking about the second region, then we must be talking about the permittivity in the second region as well. But hey, we know this. We know this to be 1.5. So if I subtract 1 from both sides, I'll get 0 0.5 equals chi 2. I think that's how you pronounce it, chi. I don't know. So anyway, once you plug these things in,
Oh, hey. Another nice thing you can, nice cancellation you can do is uh, we can write E2 in terms of flux density, D and um, epsilon, right? So let's say that's D2 over epsilon naught times epsilon R2. So that's going to lead us to a very nice, oh, sorry, no. We know chi 2 already. We know that's 0 0.5 times epsilon naught. E2 we just found is equal to this guy. So that's e times D2 over epsilon naught. And we know what ER2 is. We know it's 1.5. But hey, look at that. Those epsilon naughts get to cancel like that. Okay, and you can solve for the polarization vector just like that. 0 0.5 over 1.5 times D2, which we said was, so this is the whole part, normal plus the tangential, and you get this once you plug in what we found. Actually, no, sorry, this is given to us. And your answer will end up being for a rho minus 2a phi plus 3az nanocoulombs per meter squared. Okay, so that's the polarization vector part of that question. Now we need to find this thing, which is such a mouthful to say. I'm not going to try and say the full name for it. Oh, hey. So um, now this happens to be true. You can find this by taking the negative divergence of the polarization vector of whatever region you care about. Since uh, we're looking for this guy in region 2, we'll plug in the polarization vector in region 2. So yeah, with these boundary condition problems, you really have to be careful about what region you're talking about. So just make sure everything matches and everything makes sense to you as you go along. Be careful. So. Um, if you're going to take the divergence of this, which we know is this, um, you'll see that if you look at each of the components of this, you've got a 4, a minus 2, and a plus 3. When you derive any of these with respect to their respective variables, they're all going to end up being 0. So the divergence of this guy, negative or not, is going to end up being 0. And that's the answer for that part. So for the last part of this problem, it asks you to find the, ener <laughs> the energy density in both regions. All right, so let's find the energy density in region 1 first. Okay, this happens to be equal to 1 half times uh, region 1's flux density times, whoa, times region 1's electric field dotted together, sorry. So let's simplify a couple of things. Like when I'm doing these, I like to typically um, put D in terms of epsilon times E. So let's try that. Um, so I'm going to say D1 is equal to epsilon times E1, which is equal to epsilon not ER1 times E. Okay. So um, I will then have epsilon naught times epsilon r1 over 2 times the magnitude of e1 squared. Okay, so once you do some algebra, um, oh yeah, e1 squared, um, the magnitude is going to be, just to show you what it would look like, it would look like 388 squared plus negative 452 squared plus 679 squared. To take the magnitude, you square root this. But if you're going to square the square root, you just end up with this. So that's equal to the magnitude of that squared. And once you work that out, you will get 1.26 times 10 to the negative 5 joules per meter cubed. I'm pretty sure it's meters cubed. But the solution I read said it's in, me in meters squared. 
Um, so if someone can confirm that or not, I'll add an annotation to reflect that. Um, and to find the energy density in the second region, you follow the exact same procedure. So you just plug in epsilon naught, epsilon r2 instead, over 2, times the magnitude of the electric field in the second region squared, and that should equal 9.84 times 10 to the negative 6 joules per meter cubed. Again, I'm not sure if that's meters cubed or it's meters squared or what, but the magnitude of that should be right at least. And that is the end of that problem.